Uh, thank you for Professor Okanoya and the organizer uh, inviting me to join this uh, Evelyn conference. It's my great pleasure to talk about the study of chimpanzees to know the human mind. Not many people recognize that Japan is a special country in terms of the study of primates. Uh, because we have indigenous monkeys, Japanese monkeys, or snow monkeys. There are no monkeys and apes in North America and in, in, in Europe. So among advanced countries, Japan is only one country, many primatologists, and the indigenous monkeys. Today, I will focus on not monkeys, but apes. Uh, many people believe uh, humans are unique, Yes, unique, but uh, according to the uh, classification, human is just one member of the family hominoid. Hominoid consists of four genera, humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. So, hylogeny of the four genera is as follows. Orangutans, Chimpanzees, gorillas, and humans, we share the common ancestor about 12 million years ago. Then the lineage of orangutan <coughs> and the lineage to go to gorilla and chimpanzees and humans separated. So in a sense, um, okay, uh, today the point is outgroup. Outgroup is the something outside of the target. To know the others is to know yourself. So in this case, first, we will take orangutan as an outgroup to know the common feature of gorillas, chimpanzees, and humans. Actually, orangutans are Asian hominoid, originated from Asia. But the three others, human, chimpanzees, gorillas, originated from Africa, so African hominoid. I have been to Borneo uh, in the past decade. This is orangutan mother and infant. <coughs> and you can see <coughs> This is a video clip of orangutan mother and infant. The interval interval of orangutan is so long, like six, seven years. So there is a strong mother-infant attachment. And you will see a almost giving behavior of the foot to the baby. The infant is so much interested in mother's eating and extending the arm and mother. So it's be, <laughs> in other words, it's very rare to see active uh, extension to give the food to the infant. Okay, let's proceed to gorillas. Uh, last year, uh, at last, uh, I went to see the mountain gorillas. Gorillas can be a good outgroup to know the common feature of humans and chimpanzees. Okay. <clears throat> Orangutan, mother and infant relationship, is so important. In other words, there is no father. Father is not really involved in rearing children. But in the case of gorillas and human chimpanzees, father is involved to raise the children. But if you focus on gorillas outgroup, as outgroup, gorilla has silver back. So male, one male dominant family. And that family is a community, that's all. But in the case of humans and chimpanzees, multi-adult males uh, collaborate together to raise females and the depending offsprings. <coughs> so this is gorillas. So gorilla father and three offsprings. So you cannot see such a kind of things in orangutans. You can see this kind of 
adult male involvement in rearing offspring. And of course, in gorillas too, mother-infant bond is so strong, so important. OK, so now let's proceed to chimpanzee. Chimpanzee can be an outgroup to know the nature of human. But if you carefully look at the hylogeny, there is a missing species called bonobos. We have no bonobos in Japan. So actually, the common ancestor split into humans and the genus Pan. And the common ancestor of genus Pan split into bonobos and chimpanzees. So just think about chimpanzees not good enough to reconstruct the uh, human evolution. So two years ago, for the first time, I went to Congo to see Ixaia to see wild bonobos in Africa. <laughs> I was so fascinated by huge tropical rainforest, five, six times larger than Japan. It's a huge area of Congo Basin. And five hours uh, flight, charter flight, you land to the, the near to the destination. And from there, you have to, no road, no jeepable road. You have to ride on the motorbike. What I was amazed was um, the atmosphere is just like the ordinary villages and, and nearby environment in uh, everywhere in Africa, but I cannot see rocks, stones, even pebbles, because half of the Congo forest is swamp forest covered by the water. Another half is the land, but no stones, pebbles, because uh, now it's a uh, male bonobos and female bonobos. And the con according to the hypothetical explanation, um, Congo Basin was uh, a lake, a huge lake. Oops. And it was lifted up and so that uh, the bottom of the lake provides the uh, uh, forest floor, so no stones and pebbles. And you see bonobos, mother and infant. Again, the mother-infant relationship was so similar uh, to chimpanzees, gorillas, and, and orangutans. And here is a good example of joint attention of mother and infant. Mother looked up a sky, and then it was followed by the infant. Mother looked up the sky to see a bird fly, and it was followed by the baby bonobo. So in sum, mother-infant relationship is common to the four genera, or even chimpanzees and bonobos, and gorillas and orangutan, and humans. But if you compare those species, you can see uh, in the society level, you can see the uh, involvement, the level of involvement of adult males. So my point is the mind is based on the brain. It is very clear, but it works in social basis, just I mentioned, and also cultural influence and also ecological constraints, like no stones and pebbles in the environment. Actually, bonobos do not use the tools. We do not really, the reason why bonobos do not use the tools like chimpanzees, but once you see the ecological environments, you can see the constraints. There are no stones, so stone to use is impossible. Let me go back to the, the keyword outgroup. So logic of comparing the minds of humans and chimpanzees is as follows. There should be a human evolution, the history of, of human mind, how it evolved. But you cannot go back to the mind of the fossil hominins, like, like Homo erectus or Australopithecine or Ardipithex lamidus. Only the possible way is to compare the living double coat fossils 
like chimpanzees and bonobos. So key question for me is what is uniquely human in terms of comparative cognitive science? We are looking for the evolutionary basis of human nature, human mind, through the study of humans and chimpanzees, the closest living relatives. My way is characterized by the parallel effort of doing the research in the laboratory and in Africa. People used to do the observation in their natural habitat and used to do the experiment in the laboratory. But if you look at the places to be done and the methods to be used, there is a two by two contingency table and missing two cells. This is field experiment. You may do the experiment in their natural habitat. You may do an observation, what I call participant observation in the laboratory. So let me focus on the two uh, relatively new ideas, field experiment and participant observation. Okay, let's go to Africa first. Um, I've been field work since 1986 in Bosu, Guinea, West Africa. Um, the chimpanzees at Bosu is well known to use a pair of stones to crack open oil palm nuts to crack open the hard shell to get the edible kernel. There are about 200,000 chimpanzees estimated in tropical forests and the surrounding savanna in Africa, but only one community in Bosu is known to use two mobile stones as hammer and anvil to crack open nuts. So this is cultural tradition. As you know, chimpanzee use uh, termite fishing. That was found by Jane Goodall, but that is in Gombe in Tanzania. My chimpanzee in Bosu do not do termite fishing. They do eat termite coming out from the mound, but do not use a twig to fish termites. And my chimpanzee do stone tool use, but Gombe chimpanzees, they don't. There are stones, there are nuts, but they don't know how to do it. So just like human cases, we Japanese use a chopstick, a pair of chopstick to eat sashimi, but it does not mean all humankind use a pair of sticks as a tool to eat raw fish. So just like humans, chimpanzee has its own cultural tradition. Okay, let's go to Bosu. Bosu, Guinea, well, first of all, Africa is a huge continent uh, that can contain United States, Europe, China, India, still remains something. Oh, by the way, the center uh, red is Wamba Congo Zaire for bonobos. So there is a small community of 13 chimpanzee at the moment in Bosu. Uh, this is a demographic change of Bosu community 90, since 1976. So field experiment. What I mean field experiment is to analyze the detail of stone tool use in the wild. I set up the open air outdoor laboratory. So it looks like um, just uh, ordinary forest. But this is an outdoor laboratory because 15 meters away is a grass fence and what you have to do is to wait uh, to fix the video and steel cameras and to wait the arrival of chimpanzees and you provide stones and nuts and to see uh, how those objects are manipulated by the chimpanzees. So voila. This is a video clip. Filmed in the outdoor laboratory. You can see the stones are numbered. Identified. So now pick up a nut, place it on the ambient stone, and hit, 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 to crack it open to eat the kernel. So this is the stone tool used by wild chimpanzees. And it takes years, four or five years, <coughs> to acquire this skill. 
So the field experiment provides us the developmental change. How to acquire this skill? <coughs> so learning mechanism I call education by master apprenticeship. Now three and a half years young female not yet reached to the acquisition. She can't do it. So she goes to an adult chimpanzee to see the behavior <laughs> in a very close distance. So this is chimpanzee way of observation. And going back to her original place. No active teaching from the adults. So that is the important point. So very careful observation and self-trial. So long-term exposure and no active teaching and very intrinsic motivation to make the copy of the adults and highly tolerant to, uh, from the mother to the offspring. The field experiments provides us not only the technological aspect of the intelligence, but also the social as aspect of the intelligence. This is an example of deception in the uh, field. So here is a nine years old boy. That is the matter. So nine years is corresponding to 13, 14 years old. So low teenager, already grown up, so a bit difficult for the mother to handle, okay? And the boy, nine years old, already arrives a field uh, open air laboratory to, to crack open nuts. And the mother, late arrival. When the mother arrives there, no stones, no place are available, okay? Okay, here is the mother. So what the mother did was grooming the son. This is affiliative uh, behavior to show the, uh, the affection. You groom the son. Then mother stopped grooming and quadrupedal upright posture. This means, why don't you groom me back? So gloom back. Now the mother will steal the stone set. And please look at her facial expression. Okay. So, so far, as far as I know, this is the best example of the real behavior of deception in the real situation. So in the laboratory, I have been conducting I project. I is the principal uh, chimpanzee, a, a female chimpanzee. Uh, and the project started in April 15th, 1978. So since then, so this is the 35th year of the, of the project. There is a 14 chimpanzee of three generations in a group in Primate Research Institute of Kyoto University. You can see a, a high, 50 meters high climbing frames. And you can see a tiny, tiny baby chimpanzee on the top of the climbing frames. Mm. Um, we made an effort to make a community of chimpanzees since 1968. So it's more than four decades, but still the composition of the age sex is far from the natural community. So it takes a long, long time to really simulate the community of chimpanzee in the laboratory. Okay, the classic way of comparing humans and chimpanzee is as follows. So, of course, this is my daughter, and that is a chimpanzee, but I have the opportunity to raise the two babies at home. Um, at a look, they look similar. So this seems to be a very good way to comparing two different species because you keep the two species in exactly the same physical environment. 
Suppose that one species start speech. This comes from, not from the environment, but from the uh, inherited tendency. So that was the logic of classic way of comparing two species. But when I was forced to do this kind of thing because a baby chimpanzee was abandoned by the mother, I was forced to adopt uh, the baby chimpanzee at home. I, years, years ago, I immediately recognized this kind of comparison is not fair because my daughter has the parents, but the baby chimpanzee has no parents at all. Isolated from the biological mother and forced to adapt to the environment of different species. This is the classic way of comparing two species. It's not fair. You shouldn't do such a thing. It's not scientifically sound. It's not ethical anymore. If you isolate infant chimpanzee from the mother, infant chimpanzee looks depressive, bending the back and losing the shining eyes, holding the knees. And the baby chimpanzee will make a desperate effort to, to be acquainted with the caretaker. So that is uh, all kind of uh, ape research in captivity. I don't like it. So when Ai chimpanzee gave birth to her son named Ayumu, Ayu, by the way, Ayumu, Ai means love in Japanese, Ayumu means walk, um, I made a, just a small change. I never separated the baby chimpanzee from the mother. So the baby chimpanzee was raised by the mother. That is only one small single change in comparison to the previous studies. So mother, the baby was raised by the mother, but the mother and the researcher has a long-term friendship. So I can ask the mother to help me to test your baby. Just like the case, I test the cognitive de development in human children, I ask the mother to help me to test the baby. Is that so? So this is the stucking blocks task. Exactly the same thing I can ask the mother to help me to test the baby chimpanzee. So this is what I call participant observation. I participate in their everyday life to test, to compare the, the two species in exactly the same environment. Okay, so uh, those kind of studies has been assembled in the book from Springer, 2001, 2006, and 2010 and 2011 finally we assemble the 2011 books is the monograph about chimpanzees of Bosu and Nimba in the wild. So what I po point out today in the last part, uh, last ha second half of the talk is four points. What is uniquely human? In terms of my study of chimpanzees in the laboratory and in the world, I can say humans is cooperative breeder and has the unique life history. The second point is supine posture. It's not upright posture, bipedalism. No, supine posture is highly unique in humans. That is the evolutionary basis of mother-infant relationship <coughs> in humans. The second part, the third point is um, memory and representation or symbolization or what you want to say, uh, language. The fourth, final one is power of imagination. Let me uh, proceed one by one. Cooperative breeding. Uh, you may be surprised that to know that uh, 2007, finally we succeed to, succeeded to get the survivorship curve and fertility curve in the wild chimpanzee. It takes a long time. 
So six research sites in Africa collaborated together to collect 534 female giving births. And based on this data, we made the survivorship and fertility curve. Dotted line is the survivorship curve. So zero to four x-axis represents the age. So zero to four, six years old, five to nine, 10 to 14. So they survived till 50 years. And important point is the solid line is fertility curve. They start giving the birth 10 to 14, early teenagers, and 20s, 30s, even 40s. They continue to give the birth. This means up until the end, they continue to reproduct. This means a uh, well-known hypothesis, grandmother hypothesis. So grandmother is really the invention of humans. Human prolonged the lifespan and uh, menopause and made a lot of investment to, not to the offspring, but to the offspring of the offsprings, grandchildren. So there are old females in chimpanzees very old females, but they, they do not show the social role as grandmother. The second is supine posture, lying on the back. Many people still believe that the four-legged animals in the course of human evolution stand up <coughs> liberated the four limbs, four arms, so two hands, and turn it to be the hands, manipulate objects, turn to be the tools. The tool use, again, simulate, uh, stimulates the brain and enlarge the brain and more sophisticated tools. That is a bipedalism story, but if you are a primatologist, you cannot believe such a explanation because two reasons. One, yes, monkeys walking, four-legged animals, like four-legged animals, but think about when they stopped. It's not like cows and horses. They, they sit down like you stand up and then sit down. Because this is a pre-adaptation to arboreal life, or real adaptation to the arboreal life. So they are now going to climb up the trees. So already the body trunk is upright. So that is a common feature about primates. All primates, body trunk is already upright. The second is hands. This is the foot of chimpanzee, but look like hands. Actually, the feet are like hands to grasp the tree branches. Again, the arboreal life, the adaptation to the arboreal life, the primates has four hands. So primates is the current name of classification, but the primates was once called quadrama means four hands animals. So among mammals, four legs animals, primates are so unique because they have four hands. So in the course of human evolution, we invented not hands, but legs. From the tree down to the ground, walking long distance in the savanna, they, they invented legs feet. The unique posture in humans is not upright bipedal uh, one, but supine posture, stable supine posture, because chimpanzee cannot take stable supine posture. Look at this. If you put the baby chimpanzee back, chimpanzee baby with right hand and left leg. And several seconds later, left hand, right leg. Several seconds later, again, 
right hand, left leg. I did not know why they move this way in uh, two decades ago when I saw this behavior for the first time, I didn't realize the reason, but look at orangutan, the same behavior. Chimpanzees, orangutans, chimpanzees, orangutans, the same. And now I know the reason. They are struggling to cling the mother. So if you look at the mother-infant relationship of gorillas, uh, orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, you can clearly see the big difference between human mother-infant relationship and the ones in the other hominoids. The first three months of life, for 90 days, chimpanzee infant always cling to the mother. 24 hours a day, no exception. And mother embrace the baby. So that is a fundamental relationship. Physical contact is a fundamental relationship of mother and infant in chimpanzees. That is a clear contrast of human cases. Mother and infant physically separated. And the baby can take a stable, supine posture. So, Stable supine uh, evolutionary basis of mother-infant relationship is characterized by human unique po posture, a uh, human unique relationship. That is stable supine posture. Why stable supine posture is important? This physical separation enabled us to three things. One is, of course, face-to-face -face communication. The baby is separated and lying on the back, stable. So you can keep the distance to make the facial expression, smiling, eye gaze. So this kind of face-to-face -face communication is a lot in human cases, but very rare in chimpanzees. If you carefully look at mother-infant relationship of chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, and orangutans, you will recognize how important to keep the baby away from the mother. The second point is, of course, vocal exchange. Not many people recognize that only human babies cry, cry, cry in the night. It's a nightmare for the parents, but that is really uniquely human. No chimpanzee babies cry in the night because suppose that the baby get hungry, they themselves try to find the nipples to suck. No reason to cry to get the attention of the mother. Of course, this provides the early communication <coughs> through the vocalization and to speech. And the third point is really neglected. Not many people recognize the importance of stable supine posture for the tool use. A lot of object manipulation in the very early stage in humans but not in chimpanzees. Because chimpanzee hands for clinging. You have to cling the mother always. But human have lying on the back, so, so supported the body by the back. So the hands are free from the beginning. That is very important. It's not bipedal, upright posture to make the hands free, no. Right after the birth, the hands are free. So human hands are free for manipulating various objects from the beginning. So that is a clear difference between human manipulation and chimpanzee manipulation. And this should be the precursor of tool use afterwards. Okay, face-to-face -face communication. If you see a uh, human baby about 10, 10 days, two weeks, Look at the lips, smile. So this is called neonatal spontaneous smiling. So smiling. So it's a great pleasure for the parents. 
But if you carefully look at the face, eyes are closing, closed. So this is not the social. It's the smiling not toward the parents. So innate, this is a, an innate uh, re behavior. So human babies is equipped to smile spontaneously. The third point is memory and representation. Human unique, chimpanzee unique, and human unique way of cognition. Um, in the course of I project and the following uh, ones, we have been concentrating on some sort of ape language study. And I have been concentrating on logical mathematical skill because it's small subset and clearly defined. So I have been teaching uh, Arabic numerals to Ai chimpanzee, the mother. Then it was imitated by the baby chimpanzee. So the baby chimpanzee at the age of four uh, started to access to her, his own computer, monitor. And within six months of the first stage, um, he mastered the order of Arabic numerals, starting from one and two, and one and two and three, and one and two and three and four. One through nine, uh, he can touch the numerals in an ascending order. So in six months, he learned to do such a kind of skill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So mother is in nearby. The infant, four years old, facing to the monitor to touch the Arabic numerals. So each trial is unique. So touch is a white circle, start the task, and uh, nine numerals are scattered on the screen randomly, in the random position. Do I make myself clear? Okay, so <coughs> now this chimpanzee masters the, the skill to order the sequence of numerals. So based on this knowledge, we proceed to the test of memory. Exactly the same task, the same task. But only one difference is as follows. After you touch the numeral one, the other numerals gone. The other numerals turn to be white rectangles. And you have to, still have to touch the place of the numeral two words, three words, four words. So what you have to do is you have to remember nine numerals and the positions at a glance. Okay, please try it by yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't worry, you cannot do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Ayumu can remember the nine numerals and the position at 0 0.5 seconds. Not only a human, but also the other two chim young chimps, they can do it. So we are amazed to find the new fact that there is a cognitive test in which young chimpanzee can be better than us. So um, we manipulate the, we slightly change the task and manipulate the duration of presenting the numerals. 650 milliseconds, 430 milliseconds, 210 milliseconds, uh, even more at, at the moment we are testing 100 milliseconds and 60 milliseconds. So Ayumu, young chimpanzee, his performance is better in the short duration. So this kind of phenomena is called eidetic imagery and uh, classic experimental psychology. 
Uh, let me add a few more video clips. So this is, I think, um, seven new mellows presented only 210 milliseconds. Still, and seven new mellows means it's not uh, one, two, three, four, five. Two new mellows are missing. So one, two, four, five, six. Okay? So you can, you can sense. You cannot do it, but he can do to memorize seven numerals at a glance. And one day, exactly the same task, I had an episode like this. He can do seven numerals memory task. But this is not so easy task for me too. And he lost his attention. <laughs> But he can do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so this means not only the instantaneous memory, but also that memory continues at least for 10 seconds. So well, at the moment, people are surprised to know the fact. But maybe a decade, two decades later, people accept that chimpanzee can be better than us in a certain memory task. Then. Uh, what the contribution of our paper is to invent a good memory task to, to assess the working memory. How many numerals you can remember? How short duration is good enough? Or how long did, did an interval you can retain the memory? So we invented this kind of task. Because it's Arabic numerals, no training is necessary. You can test Japanese and Americans. You can test children and elderly. You can test uh, brain damaged patient. Okay, uh, this is Eberlang uh, component, so let me add the study about language. So chimpanzee eye is the chimpanzee who learned to use visual symbols to represent the color. So chimpanzee is corresponding, uh, choosing the corresponding color letters, kanji, Japanese, Chinese letter. And the reverse, so pink. Sorry, easy for us to brown. Red, green. So it is very clear that after the training, chimpanzee can use the visual symbols to represent the color. It is no question. So I do not deny the certain data of ape language. So to some extent, chimpanzee can learn the meaningful double quote words, signs, in gestural signs or visual symbols or even the speech. But what I recognize is um, chimpanzee island, color red goes to rexigram red and kanji letter red, but so-called stimulus equivalence, especially the symmetry. So one di suppose that you, you teach one direction in the case of humans, reverse direction is automatically generalized, but it's not the case of chimpanzee. So symmetry is very, very difficult to be established in chimpanzee. I do not give the details, but believe me, the stimulus equivalence is very, very difficult in chimpanzees. Okay, so. Uh, just one slide is about talk evolution of language. So 
my hypothesis is trade-off theory of memory and representation. The common ancestor may have the eidetic imagery like chimpanzees, but uh, we lost it in the course of human evolution. And in return, we acquired the language because at the certain point of the evolution, brain capacity is limited. So that to get a new function, you have to lose some other <coughs> functions, like the motor capability of climbing to the top or the order sense. Just like that, we lost eidetic imagery. So the final part of the presentation is power of imagination. Chimpanzees love to draw. Chimpanzees drawing. But they do not draw the concrete things like in front of red apples, they do not draw circle. They do not use red. But if you draw a circle in advance on the white paper, chimpanzee has a strong tendency to redraw. And one of my students invented an interesting test of showing sketch of the face of chimpanzees, full face or right eye missing, or both eyes missing. And this is the data of chimpanzee drawing to the sketch of chimpanzee face. So outer contour is drawn. And human children less than three years old show the similar tendency. But at the age of three and two months, Human children uniquely draw um, blank space to complete a partial image. Chimpanzees, humans, chimpanzees, humans. <laughs> so seven tested chimpanzees show the same behavior. And only humans draw the <coughs> eyes, nose, and so forth. This is the data, and my interpretation is as follows. Chimpanzee is looking at what is present. Humans, we are thinking about what is absent. So if you think that chimpanzee is looking at what is present, the eidetic imagery is not so surprising. So this reminds us of the case of Rio chimpanzee who got paralyzed under the neck and completely paralyzed. Interestingly, he did not change his behavior. Very severe bed, so cannot boom. But he did not change his behavior. He just as usual. And thanks to the God, he recovered. And this episode also reminds me of the data I obtained through the, the studies. So what is uniquely human? The shortest answer is imagination. Chimpanzee can imagine too, but the mental time travel and mental space travel, the range is quite different. Chimpanzee mainly live in the world of here and now. They seem not to be anxious about their future, even tomorrow. Chimpanzee do not become desperate because they are living in the world of here and now. But humans sometimes do. However, because of the power of their imagination, humans can have hope too. So humans can have hope. Uh, that is uniquely human. Um, those studies have been supported by my colleagues and students in the laboratory and in the wild. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was all very interesting. I, I have a question about the uh, eidetic visual memory. It's clearly humans have lost it and not as good as uh, the chimpanzees. Um, in humans, I suggest we have uh, a unique auditory uh, working memory. That is, we can take in a series of words and then keep the place for the end of the sentence, which may be so, you know, several seconds later and put in appropriate elements uh, in mirror image order. Um, and that seems to be something which you can only get from 
animals with very extensive training. Um, you, you said that uh, we, we lost identity is your memory, and then we got we got language. But would you um, would you consider the possibility that uh, the, the way that happened might have been a transfer from audit, from visual working memory to some kind of auditory working memory? Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to explain the advantage of eidetic memory, eidetic imagery in wild chimpanzees, why they have such a kind of memory. Two examples. Um, Inter-community encounters, two groups encountered. Chimpanzee is highly agonistic to the neighboring community. So in the encounter, it's better for the chimpanzee to recognize how many opponents in the bushes, here and there, and how many allies here to go to their territory or to retreat. So this kind of judgment should be done in a quick moment of the encounter. The second example is uh, figs, a uh, fallback food, so-called fallback food, very important food resource for chimpanzees, figs. So figs, a huge tree, have many, many, many fruits. But red one is ripe, and green one is not ripe. So fig trees, suppose that you are alive, the fig tree, you have to make a quick decision where you go to eat the ripe red fruits. But there might be the chimpanzee already, number one ranking, second ranking, third ranking. You should not go to such a place. So, you have to make a quick decision because rate arrival, the next one will come. So you have to make a quick decision to go to this way or to that way. So if you see the uh, daily life of chimpanzees in the wild, this kind of eidetic imagery may help us, help them to keep such a capability. But think about the similar thing in human daily life. Rain Man, the movie, the Dustin Hoffman play the autistic uh, a uh, person who can count the number of matches scattered on the floor. But adaptive value of this kind of eidetic imagery is not so clear. So chimpanzee has its own advantage to keep this kind of memory, but that is not clear for humans, that is one. Now let me go back to your point. The key word is the language, why the language is important? Because of portability, portable. Not many people mention this point. Language is important because that is portable. What is portable? That is direct experience. Your experience can be brought to the home base to share your experience with uh, the others. Suppose that you see a creature passing in front of you. Chimpanzee may memorize, oh, white spot on the forehead and black hairs and uh, uh, four legs are brown. But suppose that you can memorize the creature, not the dialect image, but through the language, like deer or antelope. You can bring this experience back to the home to share your um, memories. <coughs> so I think the prosocial behavior and prosocial society itself provides a basis of making this kind of cognition uniquely developed in humans. That is my answer. Thank you. Uh, question at the back. Jordan Public Film University. Thank you. In your reply, you answered the first half of my question. I was looking for pro-social motivation as being one of the differences. And I guess I would like to relate that to cooperative breeding. And the other thing is imitation. Would you say that it's a difference in range or is it in different difference in quality? Range, like in your last post, is that, of course, each of these have an imitation, just like with mental time travel, they have a restricted mm. form of imitation. Mm. Very interesting and challenging question. Um, yes, I just mentioned about the range, how long we can uh, think about the past and the future. So it is very apparent chimpanzees do not think about the, the days before they were born. And they do not think about, worry about the future even tomorrow. So it's very clear for me, but 
Your point is very challenging and interesting. How about the quality? Hmm. Um, I do not have a good example at the moment, so let me think about how the qualitative difference we can find between the two species. Thank you. Thank you for a, a very fascinating talk. I was wondering if you could address a criticism that has been made in the literature of some of the, the, the very compelling to me, um, uh, eidetic chemistry studies, that when performance is compared to people who have been trained more extensively in the task, they're able to do as well or, or perhaps better than just having followed the literature, so I don't know if uh, that, that has been addressed. Uh, there is a several papers followed up our study originally published in Current Biology, or the original task was uh, published in Nature in 2000. Um, the criticism is about so-called limited hold task. The duration is limited. Then um, the comparing the performance. And yes, if you train the, the human subjects again and again and again, they can lead to the level of humans, uh, level of chim young chimpanzees but does not exceed, it's the same, that is one. And those paper does not mention about the uh, masking task. Masking task is this one. 100% sure, even after training, 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 you cannot do this task. I'm talking about the latency. The accuracy, you can reach to the similar level, almost 100%. But you look at the performance. You can imagine the things. Or you may do six months training by yourself. You cannot reach to this level. Chimpanzee is much faster than us. And the uh, criticized paper does not mention this original task published in Nature 2000. Yes, please. Excuse me. One question. Um, if you are taking photos or videos of the presenters, um, I, it's too late to tell, but uh, do not do that without permission. Okay? I'm about sorry to about my presentation, no problem. All is published. <laughs> okay, good, great. <laughs> I have a question about your idea that eidetic memory was present in our common ancestor, but humans lost. What, why did you draw that conclusion as opposed to? Uh, uh, you know, a common ancestor didn't have that, but chimpanzees actually acquired it later because their habitat was um, set up for developing something like that. Oh, sorry, could you so paraphrase it? Yeah. My question is, is it possible that common ancestor did not have eidetic memory, but chimpanzee lineage developed it later? Of course. Uh, because it's a hypothesis hypothesis. So the data does not inevitably lead to the, my conclusion of trade-off. Common ancestor had this kind of eidetic imagery and chimpanzee continued to keep it and humans lost it in return, acquired symbolization, representation and language. That is my story. But yes, there is a story like, yes, um, Chimpanzee uniquely developed the eidetic imagery. So, so this kind of thing cannot be proved. But the point is, look at, uh, let's go back to the stone tools in the wild. And as I have told you, Bosu chimpanzee has a unique culture of stone tool use. And actually, Bosu villagers, humans, have the stone tool use. So, there is a paper talking about imitation of chimpanzees acquiring this stone tool use skill by carefully observing nearby human villagers who practiced uh, stone tool. That is possible, plausible, probably yes. But in the level of hypothesis, there is a possibility that it was chimpanzee who practiced the stone tool, and it was um, imitated by humans. I like this story. <laughs> <laughs> so just the same level. You cannot say this one is correct or another one is incorrect. Um, do you think this is, you know, 
this is a similar to stimulation. Mm -hmm. A human being that if uh, A to B automatically goes to B to A, but you said in chimpanzee it doesn't work that way. So do you think you can relate identity imaginary with stimulation humans? Wow, what a great idea. I like it. <laughs> so, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, that is really challenging question, and I, I may think about this Okanoya's proposal a bit deeper. But uh, let me give a different answer to the um, mm, the relationship about eidetic imagery, memory, and uh, uh, representation. Mm. <coughs> it's, mm. In the case of, let's go back to the number experiment. This is Kara and uh, Lexilam. Number experiment, why? we are so difficult to do the task of chimpanzees, uh, memorizing numerals. One plausible so, uh, explanation is somehow related to Stroop effect. When you see the numerals, not only the perception, but also the meaning is captured. So for, for us, it's numeral, but uh, one, two, three, four, five, the shape, the perception, and meaning also capture. And if you carefully look at the data of AI chimpanzee, the performance is exactly the same as humans. So this is green is AI chimpanzee. So AI chimpanzee language trained and has meaning and Arabic numerals, yes, she is only one chimpanzee who knows the meaning of Arabic numeral or cardinal aspect of Arabic numeral. So she knows five red pencils, she can touch five. But it's not the case of a young Cleopal young chimpanzee. Young chimpanzee knows only the order of numerals. So one perceives a numeral, what is triggered is just the order of numerals, that's all. But in our case, when, once we see the things, especially in the case of numerals, not only ordinal aspect, but also cardinal aspects is captured in AI, in AI chimpanzee and humans. So, so that is the, the somehow related to Stroop effect. So that is one possibility. So we have to think about, just like you uh, told me, a symbolization and representation, how it is connected to memory process is the important thing. Thank you very much. Um, well, um, please.